This section will cover two models, the value proposition, to think through your customer needs, to target your product or services closely to meet those needs, and then we move on to the business canvas model. This will help you articulate your idea for spread and uptake. It's effectively your business case to your service, your organisation, or the partners that you're working with. The value proposition will help you match your offer directly to their priorities, increasing your confidence in being able to persuade others about the value of your innovation. It does this by taking you systematically through steps that bring you to an understanding of what your customer needs and priorities are and how your innovation can directly meet those needs. It's composed of two parts, the customer profile and the value map. This session will help you understand this model by taking you through an example of a diabetes care value proposition and bringing the model to life. So let's firstly look at the customer profile. The customer jobs describes the key job your customer is trying to get done. In this example, for someone with diabetes, the main priority for the patient and carer is to keep the blood sugar within the optimum target range. Maintaining a healthy diet and attending reviews. Let's move to customer pains. Customer pains are the activities or incidents that have potential to create a poor experience for the service user and it also might create negative clinical outcomes. This might be lack of access to timely care when what they are seeking is access which suits their lifestyle. For example, having to take time out of work to attend clinics or waiting times at clinics. So what are customer gains? Customer gains outline the customer's measure of increased value for them. Gains for the customer in health and care are typically improved experience of care, better outcomes or reducing waste. For example, waste can be costs incurred or non-value added time spent for the patient whilst interacting with services. Gains can be better and more timely access to health and care services when they need it, direct health benefits, reduced burden of attending clinics. Practical examples of solutions that provide better customer gains include better access to health records, virtual clinics, selecting appointments which fit around their commitments and maintaining and managing their conditions themselves. Customer profile visually tests and tracks your understanding of the people or companies that you're intending to create value for. It's a map that provides clarity in relation to the priorities of the customer so that we can match the innovation and the solution directly to what they need. Now we have a clear idea of our customer profile, let's look at the value map. If you list the products and services your value proposition builds on, for example, remote monitoring, access to virtual healthcare advice, access to health records, selecting your own appointments, then you would describe in which way these products or services are pain relievers. In other words, do they eliminate or reduce customer pains? Using our diabetes example, remote monitoring will reduce your need to attend clinic, access to virtual healthcare advice, helps you manage your care in appropriate settings. And access to health records allows you to have full knowledge of your care package. Finally, you would outline in which way they are gain creators. Do they increase or maximize outcomes and benefits? Do they support you in living well with very little interruption to your daily life? If you need to see a healthcare professional, you choose the time and date that best suits you with greater awareness of the information that's held about you. The value map makes explicit how your products and services relieve pains and create gains. You would use it to design, develop and test your value proposition until you understand what resonates with customers. This allows you to create clear connection between what matters to customers and how your products and services alleviate pains and create gains. Great value propositions target essential customer jobs, pains and gains. Your customer profile may contain countless jobs, pains and gains, but your value map highlights and directs you to the ones with the greatest impact and which you should focus on. What is a business model? What are all the pieces in the business model? Let's take a look at these nine boxes which describes what is needed for an effective business case. The value proposition answers the question, 
What are you building and for who? The value proposition is about solving a problem or need for a customer, understanding what pains you're solving and what gain you're creating. The next thing is, who are my customers? Who is my target audience for this solution? You need to describe all of their geographic and social characteristics, demographics, age, gender, type of condition, which part of the care pathway are you focusing on? The next is channels. How do you get your product to your customers? Here we think about the distribution channels, a physical channel such as a clinic, hospital or community centre, or perhaps virtual channels, mobile monitoring, virtual clinics, online platforms. Customer relationships is the fourth piece. Customer relationships has a direct correlation to your value proposition, customer segmentation and the channels. In other words, I ask the question, how do I get customers through the various physical or virtual channels? It asks, how will you keep patients engaged and involved in managing their care? In this example, is it by healthcare professional staff one-to-one -one communication? Is it by data sharing with patients and other providers? Or is it engagement through remote monitoring or virtual platforms? The next thing is revenue streams in health and care provision. This is how your idea will be paid for and how it might save costs or add value to the care of the service users. We move on to key resources. What do you need to make the business model work? What assets are important? For example, physical assets, equipment, software, workforce or office space. Then you will describe your key partners and suppliers. What is it that you're acquiring from partners? And also, what activities are they going to perform? In this example, that might be pharmacy, community care, or a software manager. You're beginning to describe your key stakeholders, and we will be going over this in more detail later in the programme. Your key activities are the important things you need to perform to achieve success. It's your implementation, the tasks and steps that bring your idea to life. Finally, costs. What are the costs and expenses you require to bring your idea to life? For example, that might be staff time, space that you need, equipment that you need, and even printing and materials.